Renaissance Italy was a time which was full of characters, innovators and names, which we still talk of today. The likes of Machiavelli and his developments of political thought in the West, to artists and Michelangelo who created David, a true masterpiece. However, one man's name is known by everyone, not just as an innovator, but a man so far ahead of his time that his ideas still astonish people today. This is Leonardo da Vinci, the philosophy of a creator. <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci was born on the 15th of April, 1452, around the Tuscan hill town of Vinci, 20 miles away from Florence. He was born out of wedlock to Sir Piero da Vinci, a Florentine legal notary, and Caterina from the lower class. It remains uncertain where Leonardo was exactly born, as due to being born out of wedlock, he would have wanted to be kept a secret by his father. So much of his early life is shrouded in mystery. However, we know Leonardo's parents both married separately the year after his birth, and it is widely believed that he was raised on his father's estate, though it is not confirmed. What we know for sure is his education. Even with his family background, Leonardo only got basic and informal education in writing, reading and mathematics. Although there are theories that this perhaps was due to his artistic talents, which his family may have decided to focus their attention on. One memory which Leonardo recalled from being a child for me showcases the genius and unique mind which he would later in his life use to take science and art to new spheres. This memory is on the flight of birds. He recalled as an infant when a kite came to his cradle and opened his mouth with its tail. Though commentators still debate whether the anecdote was an actual memory or a fantasy, it shows the artist and the imagination which lay upon Leonardo's mind, the romanticism that so many great minds have. In the mid 1460s, Leonardo's family moved to Florence, which saw at the age of 14 Leonardo become a garçon, studio boy, in the workshop of Andrea del Versicio who was the leading Florentine painter and sculptor of the time. Leonardo became an apprentice by the age of 17 and remained in training for seven years until eventually becoming a master in his 20s. Though Leonardo would not just stick to the arts, he was fascinated by science and the human body. Leonardo would dissect bodies and create drawings which were so ahead of their time that they would not be caught up with by science until a hundred years later when his sketches were found. Leonardo's life was ultimately a battle of bringing the sciences and the arts together and it is ultimately one which he won, even if it did not seem so to many at the time. For most you know da Vinci, it is due to his world-renowned and generational artworks. His Mona Lisa is undoubtedly the most famous portrait, or painting for that matter, to ever be produced. To his painting of The Last Supper, a masterpiece not only of art, but perspective, and his drawings, dissections of anatomy that almost look more real than the true thing. This is what made Leonardo a symbol of human history, but what is it about his work which is so special? His early works were very much to the beauty of Renaissance style, a proof of his talents truly being found in his paintings, Baptism of Christ, which he painted in conjunction with Verruccio. This showed how da Vinci was capable of creating greatness at a young age, but he wasn't there yet. After this, da Vinci would delve into some beautiful compositions, but most he would not finish, such as Saint Jerome in Wilderness. But the one which showed and cemented that da Vinci was great was his painting of a lady with an ermine. The painting is characterized by the pose of the figure, with the head turned at a very different angle to the torso. Unusual as at the time many poses were rigid in the profile. However, the true masterpiece is Leonardo's most famous painting of the 1490s, The Last Supper. It showcases the last meal shared by Jesus with his disciples before his capture and death. Though what is brilliant about this piece is that it was initially going to be a fresco, but instead, da Vinci used his genius to give himself more time to paint the piece, by adding tempera to the already dry plaster, allowing him to work slowly and develop the shading that comes with the chiarosco of the mural and make any changes necessary over time. The last well-renowned piece is the small portrait known as the Mona Lisa. It is possibly the most famous painting in the world. The shadowy quality for which the work is renowned came to be called Schumacher, or Leonardo's smoke. Though Leonardo was a revolutionary painter, it was his drawings that came to have revolutionary implications, not just on art, but on science too. Leonardo's drawings are some of the most detailed and interesting pieces which have ever been created, due to their implication on proportion and science. Among his famous drawings are the Vitruvian Man, a study of the proportions of the human body, and the head of an angel for the Virgin of the Rocks, 
a biological study of the star of Bethlehem. Though the truly fascinating ones are his sketches of anatomy, as an artist, he quickly became a master of topographical anatomy, drawing many studies of muscles, tendons, and other visible anatomical features. Due to his success, Leonardo was given permission to dissect human corpses at the hospital of Santa Maria Nuova in Florence, and later at hospitals in Milan and Rome. He created over 240 detailed drawings and wrote 13,000 words toward a treatise of anatomy. His discoveries of anatomy and the body were so ahead of its time that when his private sketchbook of anatomy was found a hundred years later, his work became the foundation of modern anatomy. Though his scientific feats did not stop there, da Vinci wanted to be a weapon designer. However, with no wars needing weapon design and him being seen as an artist, not an engineer, this did not go great for da Vinci. However, this would not stop da Vinci as he would sketch and design inventions which were so far ahead of the time, it's ridiculous. One which became an obsession for Leonardo was the art of flying. He was obsessed with birds and wondered if he could ever make a human fly. He drew up amazing designs, almost designing what looked to be the first helicopter, but ultimately he would not make a man fly. But his drawings were inspirations for those who did hundreds of years later. Though he successfully designed contraptions such as a parachute and a giant crossbow, and most impressively is designed for a bridge project across the Golden Horn connecting medieval Istanbul to Galata. This was ridiculed for being impossible to make, but engineers today have tested and found that indeed would have been stable, showcasing that da Vinci was so far ahead of his time that even those at the top of their fields thought his ideas were insane. Ultimately, looking at Leonardo da Vinci, we must see a great artist, but also a great scientist. He managed in his lifetime to stamp a mark so hard that even in today's age, we still look at his work in both spheres in awe at what the great man was able to achieve. The what we must take away from da Vinci is to continue to push the boundaries that have been set before us, even if they appear to be immovable. As though da Vinci may not have been able to move the time period which he was in, he ultimately managed to move the whole of humanity forward when the world was ready to know his mind. We must do the same, as though the world may not need some thoughts today, it indeed will need them tomorrow. Don't give in because that is the true philosophy of a creator.